have a listen to this story. An aspiring writer stays at home with the kids and starts working on an old book she has half done under the bed. She decides, like so many others, to self-publish it on the internet. Within a year, she's a book deal in the bag with two more to follow and an award under her belt. Um, that aspiring writer is Carmel Harrington. It's actually a true story. It's not fiction. Uh, she's the author of uh, Beyond Grace's Rainbow and she joins me in studio. Carmel, thanks for coming in to us. Thanks, Shay. Thanks for having me. It's a, it's a great story. Yeah, it, it, when you read it like that, that actually sounds incredible. Thank yeah. you. I think I might record that and play that every day. Yeah. Um, take us back to. I mean, you were you're 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 a mother. You have yes. You, you basically gave up your career to, to to raise your kids. That's exactly yes. But yeah. you always had a love of writing, and you were sort of tipping away. Is that kind of how it worked? Well, on and off, I'd say you know ever since I was a kid myself, I had an aspiration to be a writer. But um, I had written short stories, did a few articles here and there, but never actually did anything formally about it kind of I suppose life just took over started working in sales which is really kind of a busy career anyhow so yeah. I would be away from home a lot travelling and it just didn't happen the time was never right but I did at one occasion I, I started to write Beyond Grace's Rainbow and I wrote the first draft of it and kind of left it under my bed as you said um, and then life changed a lot in the last couple of years I got married had children and the job that I was doing it just wasn't conducive to, to having with having kids so um, decided to become a full time mother as you said and give this writing malarkey you moved back down to I, to I know Exeter. you're, a, you're a, it's, it's the, probably the greatest name in, in, in uh, I think the, the best name in GAA uh, folklore Eilert, Eilert the Balak is oh that, god yeah, yeah. Da- daddy is very happy now yes, <laughs> daddy is a Balak man yes yeah. and um, yeah you were telling me I hadn't realised two parishes it's uh, two together, parishes yeah. they hurled together oh yeah the hurling is, is huge for us at home but yeah I'm a ballot girl and um, but I'm living in Screen now Which in is Wexford a few miles down only the road, a few yeah. miles down the road yeah, yeah it's a lovely part of the world it's so really you beautiful you moved home I, rural ideal and all that and yeah very much so you started well, you, you you went back to the book then, basically. Yeah, I suppose I had more time to think because yeah. when, when I stopped um, working in sales and I was at home with the kids, I kind of wanted to do something. My, I didn't want to, um, as much as I love being a full-time mum, it's like the most important job to me, but I wanted to do something. So my husband, Roger, he he really, really wanted me to try to do something with the writing and it was him really who kept saying every day, like he'd nag me every day, you've got to do How this. How many pages have you written? <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a bit like that. So then I decided last year, I thought, God, you know what, maybe I'll just have a go with this and really give it my best shot and I did so I've worked long and hard for the last year I suppose and I, I mean because you know I've got kids and I, mm. I know the odd time you have to write a column or something and you're at home and they're, it's oh, gotcha. difficult how, how did you juggle that did you like did you wait till they'd gone to bed kind of at, I, any time I, I, they took a nap I'd write late into the night often till like 3, 4 in the morning it wasn't unusual when I was getting that the book rewritten and ready, you know, to, to self publish. Um, Saturdays and Sundays, Rog would have to be mummy and daddy, and I'd um, I'd have a go then. So I just kind of worked every hour I could, whenever I could. Okay. But uh, the children, it was very much around the kids. The kids came first. Yeah, and time. luckily I say when you stayed up till three o'clock in the morning, the kids would lie in bed till about they ten would. or eleven oh, every stop. morning. Yeah. I, I had a newborn son when all this was going on as well. You know, right. so okay. Nate, he was he was quite he was um, a bit of a night owl. He was up most nights with me actually, but sure, he was good. He was okay. Good. Now you did the sort of tell. Actually, the first thing I was going to ask you about the poetry, but tell us a little bit about the book. What's the, what's the premise behind it? Sure. Well, the book is actually about a young mother. Um, I suppose not co- not uncoincidentally. Yeah. So I'm, I'm <laughs> bothering myself. Like, Where young. did you get the inspiration from? Yeah. <laughs> but she's a young mother and she's a single mother, though. And um, she has some pretty nasty news. She finds out that she has cancer. Um, but she's told by the doctors that she should really look for a bone marrow transplant. It would be her best chance at kind of beating the cancer. But she's adopted and doesn't know her biological family. So... The story, while it's a very sad, um, you know, topic, cancer. It's not just about cancer. It's about um, a woman's search, I suppose, for her, for her, pa- through, for her past. And there's kind of a web of lies of deceit, which has been hidden for thirty years. Why her biological family don't want her to know who they are. So she's kind of trying to find her way through rural Ireland and find out who her mother and father are, and um, and ultimately get that bone marrow transplant that's going to save her life. Okay, sounds great. Now, did you? Did you feel right? You know what, this isn't bad or did did, did you need your, your husband to encourage you or did, did you immediately feel I have something here? I did actually. To be honest with you, Shane, I've always worked with my gut. I just have a feeling sometimes and with that story, I just felt like it was a story that people would um, would like um, and I wrote it um, it was very much came from my heart and, uh, and my imagination but I love the story myself and I thought uh, there's multiple themes in it and I quite, quite like that. I like the idea that you can family doesn't have to be 
um, the family, your blood family. Family can yeah. be actually your friends, can be um, your adopted family. I think once you're loved, they can be your family. So I quite liked exploring that mm. theme, if you okay. like. So where did you get the idea to... Uh, did, did, had you approached the publisher at all first? or did, Where did you get the idea to self-publish? Um well, really, I'd, when, I, when the book was finished, I kind of was looking at the industry and trying to work out w- whether I'd go to an agent or a pub- publisher, first of all. But um, everything I read was just telling me that publishers in Ireland weren't really taking on new authors. And if they were, they were far and few between. Um, so I figured maybe if I could find a way, I suppose that was where my marketing background came through. But I thought if I could find a way to show that my story was good and that people did like it, maybe a publisher would notice me. So that was why I decided on the ebook publishing, if that makes sense. So yeah, yeah, it was okay. for that reason. So how did it work? I mean, you... you you published it online, effectively? Published it online. Oh, God, if you'd have seen it, my friends helped me edit it. I had a couple of really lovely friends who read it and we did our best between us to edit it as best we can. I did the cover of the book, the original cover myself, on my iPad. So this was a real kind of, you know, stay-at-home mum job. <laughs> but yeah. I got it done and then got it uploaded to Amazon and iTunes and um, took it from there. It's quite quick, actually, to, to self-publish yeah, yeah. an ebook. It's quite quick. Now, I'm guessing your sales uh, background came into good use then when it came to hitting the phones and getting on to people and trying to push this book. Yeah, and it's difficult because really people don't really want to know when it's a self-published book because you're an unknown author and yeah, you know, it could the, be anything basically. Yeah, yeah, and you're asking people to... Now I did, I put it on the market quite low price as well because I kind of figured people might be, you know, if, if it was for something for a couple of euros, they would be more likely to buy it. But it did quite well. I actually even spent two weeks on the um, at number one on the um, iTunes charts in Ireland. So I was really kind of buoyed by that. Yeah, it gave me a I lot of confidence. Imagine. Yeah. So when did the breakthrough come in terms of how did you, how did you make the jump then to a publisher actually take Well, I started book? looking for an agent first and I got an agent f- relatively quickly, actually. Um, Tracy Brennan of the Trace Literary Agency, she signed me in January of this year. So then she started focusing on getting me the publishing deal and I started working on book two, started writing book two. Um, but I won a Kindle Book Awards in March of this year and I think that was one of the turning points because all of a sudden that was voted by the public yeah and so um, I think you know it made does people that open kind of, doors do you think it does I think just even the fact that people took the trouble to actually vote um it certainly gave my agent something to talk to publishers about and say to them, look, at the, her fans really love this book enough that they voted for her. And um, publishers started to talk to us then and then ultimately... Harper Collins. Harper Collins. Yeah, yeah. It's a big books and mega stardom away, basically. Well, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I, I, I haven't been one of those... Um, somebody mentioned to me that Cecilia Hearn had had this huge advance and that hasn't happened to me. <laughs> okay. No, so I've got to wait. The 12th of September is when the book goes on sale. And um, please God... Um, and everything else, fingers, toes, everything crossed that it will sell and, you know, the royalties yeah. will come in. It sounds like there might be a film there in that book as well, but it looks things... God, Shane, wouldn't that be lovely? <laughs> that be, it really would be lovely. Off to Hollywood. Yeah, my mother would agree with you. She says that all the time. <laughs> a lovely film, you know. Um, it's an old cliche. Um, everyone says, there's a book in everybody. I mean, yeah. do you agree with that or it's a, it's a bit more complex than that, isn't it? It's a lot more complex. I agree that everybody has a story to tell, but whether they have the um, ability and the determination um, to actually get it down on paper or on, on, on a laptop is a different story. So I think we all have a story to tell or, you know, an idea in our heads, but, you know, it's a different story to actually write it. And actually a lot of friends have said to me that they've tried to write before and they've kind of said to themselves, oh, I've definitely got a story. But when they sat in front of the laptop, the words didn't come. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. not for everyone, you know. I think, but okay. Um, the name of the book is Beyond Grace's Rainbow, That's and it. it's published. It's out on what date? The twelfth of September, but it is available to pre-order now. Initially, Shane, it's coming out as an ebook um, because it was an ebook originally, and they can do that quickly. But it's coming out in print, which will be. I would be so happy when I can. Yeah, when you get that hard copy. Yeah, in your hands, you know, yeah. just having just seen it online, it would be lovely to get that copy in my hand. So that's later this year. Okay, fantastic. Well, look, it's a great story, uh, Carmen Harrington. Best of luck with it, and thanks indeed for coming into it.